What's up guys, welcome on my channel. This time I've prepared for you a tournament review. I know a lot of uh, you guys who are following me are quite into have been quite interested by the tournament the Ocho which just finished uh, was really a great experience for me so I decided to do something where I can show you first the result and then uh, go into list analysis uh, while using uh, I have a, a model for that a template um, an impact analysis ma matrix like uh, I used to call it which is quite useful because then you can you really analyze the impact of each unit during the whole tournament and you will see it's quite interesting for me uh, as a tool to you to analyze uh, a bit how effective were the single entry within the list okay round one we were paired against qtl here you have the result uh, we got a small loss against uh, qtl what happened during the pairing was quite interesting. We we messed up a bit our preparation of the of the pairing, and basically a, a a column was shifted during the pairing process, which means we we our captain worked with uh, inaccurate uh, estimation for the pairing process, which leads to a couple of surprises in the pairing. But still, we were really close to to QTL. We could have actually um, won won this round, but QTL played well. Um, we had some really interesting matches and uh, yet at, at the end we lost 76 to, to 84 congrats to, to QTL for this strong round uh, here you see the matrix uh, the comparison between the results on the left um, you have the result in bold and then on the right you have the comparison with our estimation of the single matchup so with the difference so basically here you see uh, Xavier did a 15 uh, his estimation of the game was rather than 8 and therefore the difference between estimation and uh, result is a positive difference of 7. Um, as you can see we got a good, good compensation between some some uh, positive results where we, we got a couple of points, uh, me included, over the, the predicted result and then uh, some uh, disappointment where we lost a couple of more points to what, what we expected. But uh, if you see the pairing, uh, here you see a bit the, the problem coming when you have uh, four game on eight where you expect a loss and then two game where you expect a draw and then only two game where, where you expect a win. So it's it was quite... A uh, low result estimated with only a 77 after pairing. Um, I think with the pairing metrics overall, it would have been able to achieve a better result with a proper pairing. But yeah, that was a mistake that we made, and uh, it at, towards the end it was not so bad with a with a 76, and then uh, only a slight difference to the expected result after estimation. Um, thanks to some compensation of of the result, of course, that uh, that made a, a good difference in our favor. So three win, couple of losses, some close loss, and therefore a, a very narrow score with 76. So congrats to to QTL for round one. Round two, we had, uh, drew against the Juice Crew. Uh, here again, you have the result and the pairing uh, against the the Juice Crew. I will move on move on again. Uh, to the the interesting part which is always comparison between the expected result and the um, yeah the estimation and the result that we obtain so here again you see pairing process what much more interesting with some uh, positive matchup four positive games and then four a narrow loss but nothing too bad uh, for us if you see the expected points of our players uh, therefore after pairing an expected result of 89 and we were able to achieve slightly more than that with 92 so quite close to the pairing um, here you can see the, the difference of course here had a very big loss as you saw on my channel a game which I played pretty badly and therefore ended up with only one uh, rather than the expected result which was quite positive so here a, a big gap uh, but thanks to my uh, to my teammates especially here you see Max and Xavier were able to achieve very good result much more much uh, high win actually in comparison to expected small loss so well done to them and also Andy with who makes a, a very good performance with a strong 19 Coco as well 19 so yeah some four big wins which helped immensely towards the goal and 92 is a I guess a good score but could have been possible to maybe do um, even better 
And then let's move on to round three. We were drawn against the uh, old team, a team from Spain. Um, here it was pretty strange because a couple of games uh, we weren't uh, able to play them. I guess three games at the end. I guess these three games were basically not played and the rest was, was played. So uh, a strange round, but we were still able to get a, a very good win. Again, here you see the table. Uh, Xavier is continuing his very good winning streak with this time a 17 rather than the 8 expected. So three times that he expected 8 and made really high win. Uh, Andy lost this time. Uh, me, like I said, I, I didn't have to, to play this round. The same goals, if I remember correctly, for Max and Mibola. And then the rest of the game we played, uh, Coco had some good op opening, but uh, at the end it ended up a 9 as expected. And then uh, Dim was able to, to get a small win and Mike did a really good round getting a high win and therefore uh, giving them some bonus points here as you can see. Uh, after pairing with a um, small win expected, a small loss expected, as you can see we have a couple of uh, narrow losses, uh, close round, uh, yeah, with two again, uh, something quite similar that what we had to the QTL but this time we were able to to get some uh, some big wins on some games for example Mike's games with a plus 9 which is quite interesting and then at the end we were able to win uh, 102 uh, points after this round round 4 against TRC so here if you see the recap we got a narrow loss a good win uh, now a cap and now we play Team France and here we were able to, to win all games. Uh, again, for me, I, I didn't play this round. My opponent couldn't play at the, at the agreed time. So unfortunately, uh, no game for us. But the rest, they all played and all got uh, wins uh, with, a, with a very high victory, which was quite a f unexpected for us. Uh, here you can see again our table. We expected after pairing a very good win. As you can see, no losing match, which was quite surprising for us. After pairing, we were really happy. And then the captain of France, Benji, uh, who we know quite well, uh, told us, yeah, we also are quite happy about, about the pairing. We have a 90 plus in, in the esti estimated result, which was a surprise because then you always know one uh, one team has, has wrong because it's not possible that we both expect a, a big win. Uh, here what happened, so Xavier was still able to, to win again, fourth win in a row. Uh, Andy was close to the estimation with a good 13. Um, I didn't play as, as I told you, Mike was also close to his score. Uh, Dim did a, a solid win with 15, plus 5 to his estimated result. Uh, Coco very solid win with a 16. And then at the end also Mibola with a plus 6 with a score of 17. So yeah, uh, all all wins very very solid round and i think that's that give us some confidence because then you see okay we didn't start so well uh, then we did um we expected a win against Drew Screw uh, to bounce back and we were able to achieve it but no cap so we adopting doubt uh, a little bit then all team was kind of strange because we didn't play three games but still got some good wins but two losses and then here we got really confirmation that we might be able to do something in this tournament. We knew if if we lost against TRC, uh, then we could fight for for the middle of the the pack or maybe top ten or maybe a podium if if you do really well in the in the next two stages. But you know that was a decisive round for us. They were above us, quite close to the top. They they did really three solid rounds. So for us, it was really the deciding uh, the deciding uh, round, I guess, to see if we can have some ambition. And we were able to climb back with this solid cap uh, to climb the table and get close to the podium. So that was quite interesting. Uh, next round we play against England, round 5. Uh, very interesting round. Uh, here you have again uh, all the detail with all the player. You can always uh, play pause and move back. Uh, myself, I play against uh, Chris Bond. You are able to, to find battle reports on my channel. And again, uh, Xavier on the captain duel was able to get another win with a uh, 14. And I guess what was decisive in this round were the two wins on the last day of uh, Raphael and Mike, who did 20 and 19, which was really huge. Also, very positive performance from, from Max uh, with a 17. So here you have estimation. Again, another good round after pairing. Uh, expected a 90. We're able, able to get slightly more to get the cap. And here basically you have the difference. Uh, of course, Mibola was huge with a plus 13 to the estim estimated result, which was only a 7. He was able to get a 20. 
20 and then uh, Max as well with a plus uh, plus 7 and Mike with plus 6 so very solid rounds uh, from uh, from Mike Max and Mibola who are not uh, ETC player we are I didn't say it at the beginning of the video but we are the, the team is composed of uh, four ETC player uh, Xav Andy uh, Dim and Coco of Team Switzerland and the rest of us are part of the ETC group but uh, at the moment uh, not part of the ETC Team Switzerland so not selected for this year at least for the for the ETC with Switzerland so we're here uh, it was an interesting opportunity I guess for all of us to, to play with the the Team Switzerland in, in this tournament and here three of the of the non non uh, etc player were able to get huge wins so congrats to to them for for getting a a very good uh, positive result which was at the end uh, over our expectation by 18 points and then last round basically after this round and this cap against england we were able to be slightly above uh, team usa two points more than them so we knew basically that we need to get an 82 81 to to be in first place depending on the result of the second table i guess 82 was making uh, the win sure for us so we knew we need to win slightly and uh, therefore let's see what happened uh, again we were able to get a huge win another huge win uh, thanks to a very good win by, by Xavier in the Demon uh, Legend Mirror. Here that's, that was quite enough strange because during the pairing we got three Mirror game. Uh, my game, the game of Xavier and also uh, I guess the... Um, what was the last one? The War of the Dark God Mirror games. Which some uh, very uh, yeah unbalanced result. Uh, Alex got a very good win against uh, Ma uh, Raphael. Uh, Xavier got this 20 against Jeremy. And I was able to win against uh, Justin so yeah the, the mirror games were quite interesting to see and then on the last day uh, Andy was able to get a good win against Chris uh, which which led us to, to the cap uh, exactly what we needed to, to finish with the cap uh, high win as well from Coco but that was kind of expected if you see the table here you have the final table complete thanks by the way Mike for preparing this table for me it's looking really nice so here we see Xavier uh, winning streak with a 20, uh, much more than his expected result. If you see at the end, he expected four loss uh, around the way and he was able to get uh, six wins and finish with 96 or top basher, 16 on average. So really, really strong performance from the ETC Switzerland captain Xavier. Andy uh, was able to get uh, 18, he expected 10 against Chris, but uh, uh, Chris committed since he knew already that they lost the round, he tried to commit heavily and Andy was able to, to punish and win uh, big. Um, I expected a small loss against Justin uh, because you, I refer to the battle report against Justin, you can check there what I explained a little bit about my estimation of the game and was able to, to win 16. Uh, Mike won slightly more than what he expected against the uh, Dwarven old player and Dim it was quite clone, close against Sorian Ancient, uh, 11, he expected 10, uh, which was really close. Then Coco made a strong game. Uh, we knew that this, this game against uh, Ogrekine would be positive for Coco. Uh, it was a really interesting game because Coco was uh, quite defensive at the beginning and then was able to chaff, counter-attack. It was uh, and a very surprising game for those who were able to watch uh, so strong performance by Coco and then we got uh, two uh, big uh, losses um, yeah the, the pairing was not so bad with the 81 on the estimation so we knew if we get close to that we should be able to win the tournament but th that was quite close so we knew there were two expected uh, losses when we saw Xav quite at the beginning winning 20, we knew, oh, that's 11 bonus points, actually, uh, if you compare with the estimation, so you know that you have some bonus. And then we got some uh, heavy loss, I don't remember from who, I guess from Mibola, at the, uh, relatively at the beginning, and we knew that we it, it, lost, it, it compensated a bit of the bonus point of Xavier, so that we had to make solid games. And then after that, we were able to get a good Friday night and finish on Saturday. So yeah, uh, that was again a good performance and if you see, uh, basically beginning was not so great, uh, partially due to the to the pairing which was uh, not so optimal, but also maybe us, we could have probably do better in some of the table. Then reaction against Juice Crew, but uh, still not a, not a cap. 
uh, maybe it would have been better to do it would have been possible to do better especially in my game here you see uh, I, I made a, a huge loss where we expected 14 so this is a, a huge gap a huge chunk of point missing at, at the end and then after that basically uh, all caps uh, that was really really good I, I I think for me decisive point is really the round against TSC when when we made a uh, despairing which was really positive and then able to confirm this with a good win then we knew we had a really good chance because then uh, England uh, we knew it, it was going to, to be close but will be a really interesting round and then again when you win big against England you say okay now we have a good chance because I guess England beats USA I'm not sure about that so we knew we had a, a chance to win the tournament and that, that was for us somehow unexpected because uh, that was Dim who set up the team three days before the tournament who asked who want to play. Uh, only four members of the ETC team were ready to add possibilities to play this tournament. So then they had to see a little bit who else in the group, in the training group might be interested. And we see uh, some good performance. So here, if you see the ETC player, really good result from Xavier, Andy as well. Uh, Coco and Dim, quite solid performance. And then um, from uh, from Mike, also a very solid performance from, from the Ogre. I'll help, help him with the list, so I was quite happy. Uh, rare shoot that he made a good result with this list, which was really solid. 12.5 uh, uh, average, good performance by Mike. And then also very solid from, uh, from Max and Mibola. And uh, myself, uh, quite happy, a bit uh, disappointed that I didn't play two games, but the rest of my game, I guess I, I was really disappointed with the game against uh, the Juice Crew, which I didn't play. Uh, yeah, I made a, really a lot of mistakes. I guess here, the, the game against Chris Bond, I should have done better, but still quite close to the estimation. And then some rather good games against QTL and uh, USA. So yeah, here we have all the results and the table is looking like this at the end. So basically, yeah, USA with this big loss, um, they they went down uh, quite big and finished on the, the fifth place, which is a bit unfortunate for them because they made a good tournament. And then QTL, who made uh, an amazing tournament, they won their sixth round. So congrats to, to QTL, uh, deserved uh, um, very good place on the podium, second place. So congrats to, to Francesco and his team. Uh, team Russia finished third, strong performance as well. And then Poland was able to climb back. Uh, they had some losses towards the beginning, I guess. And then they were able to climb back the table. So congrats to them for the fourth place and USA as well. Very solid tournament from them. A fifth place and the top eight. Basically, we have uh, Spain, Germany and uh, Belgium completing the, the top eight of the tournament. So congrats to, to all these teams. Uh, list analysis. So let's move on. This is my famous, um, how I call that, impact analysis. A unit impact analysis, more or less. So basically here I put game after game the game I played, uh, what happened for each of the individual entry and then the ID basically I highlight in green uh, when I was quite happy and highlight in red when I was quite unhappy and then at the end you see conclusion and you say okay uh, was it a good choice what would I change so let's start with the general uh, he was able to deal a huge damage and take the force one unit on the game one so huge influence on game one with the alchemy uh, was killed on game two by the by the speedy because of my uh, dumb mistakes. Uh, turn five gave uh, some uh, good boost in decisive combat, and then game six game six was able to wound the bastion gunnery tank to make a lot of wounds with magic. So very very effective in magic uh, for me. The master of alchemy is still the best choice for for magic for the, the the core of the magic and giving a good general safe general in the bunker. It's still for me a really really solid choice. The Vizier BSB was naked in a bunker. First game did nothing special, just be on the good position to give the reroll. A second game uh, had the same faith at the general, so <laughs> died stupidly. And then game five and six, nothing special to see. So I guess in conclusion, what I can say regarding the BSB, uh, provided reroll were needed. And sometimes a 12 in combination with his movement and the fact that he needs to be in a bunker because if naked is sometimes not enough to be everywhere. So to give the, the reroll at the good place. Uh, the Bastion unit with the blunderbuss, so the adept of occultism on the blunderbuss. Uh, game one did a couple of wounds, tried to chase the scoring unit. Um, the game two resisted well against the savage but died because I had no counter charge set up. 
the game five was decisive. This def definitely my MVP of the game was able to win combat against Riot two time to do a couple of damage against Pathfinder, win combat against Pathfinder were really close to get me a huge win, which would have been a bit, uh, yeah, too, uh, how can I say? Would have been too nice for me because I think the way I played, the number of mistakes I made, I didn't deserve to to win big in this fight, uh, in this in this game. And then last games, uh, the Bastion died because of range damage, but still able to score scenario and did also a couple of of wounds, so were quite solid. So I guess what can I say about the Bastion in the old version? Quite resilient, provides some reliable reliable shooting. Uh, also, I like the synergy between Adept Occultism on the Bastion. I think it's quite interesting because you can give it a ward save. Uh, you can heal it, uh, possibly with the Pentagram of Pain. You can cast uh, breast, uh, Toxic Breast, which is also useful in combat. So I think the synergy with the Adept Occultism were really nice. And I think that would be my choice if I need to feature again the Bastion in the future list. That would be an Adept Occultism, uh, most likely. Uh, the Overlord on Bull of Shamut. Uh, it was a test. I really loved the Bull of Shamuts, but I still struggled to play them. And here we saw the best and sometimes the worst of the Overlord. So first game, it was decisive, but was really close to die. <laughs> he killed Helmo, killed Feldrak, but finished the game with one wound. And game two, uh, the same. He, he killed Gargantula, but then died to the Soft Comet. So I think this is the best perfect illustration. You have a good damage output. He's mobile, not chaffable, so quite interesting, offensively speaking. But uh, he can die really easily. And here you see, you fight a Gargantula, even with incendiary marker, you can die easily. So um, yeah, that's that's the the main problem of him. Uh, game five, he died against two round of of shooting, and then game six, he had to hide. So I would say I wouldn't feature him again. It's 600 points. For me, it's a bit too expensive and fragile for what he provides. And I guess for a similar role, if you compare what he did, I guess sometimes uh, either another Speedy could kill an, an Helmo or maybe, I guess, I get Gargantula, Academy Titan has better chance. Uh, he also maybe slightly more resilient to, to sometimes uh, do something because of the fact that you have seven health points and toughness six. So I guess for this role with lateral movement and the fact that you can charge but you can also be challenged, for me it's a bit too expensive and fragile for, for what he does and for what he provides for 600 points. Um, but that's also maybe due to me, the way I play, I'm maybe not the, the type of player who take huge risk with such model. Maybe you need to take more risk sometimes to really uh, take advantage of the, of the possibilities offered by the model. Uh, the warrior bunker, nothing special to say about them. A classic cheap bunker. The slaves, uh, as always, I'm, I think there is always a use for them. You can always chaff something. Uh, set up uh, counter charge, try to block, um, give battle focus to the Bastion in this case, uh, flee charges, uh, screening, you have always a huge, I think always a use for, for, for this amount of point in core, it's always interesting. And then the vassals, um, I was not convinced to be honest, to be honest, they were able to shoot, score a few shots, sometimes uh, go for the for an objective, but still, I'm not convinced. I think for the same amount of point, I would favor maybe a unit of blunderbuss or do something else. For me, definitely not the best choice in core. Too expensive for what they did, but still quite nice to have the 18 inch range with the champion. That was something I use sometimes to to be able to score the objective and not be afraid of the check but at the same time you say if you have a little block of blunderbuss you are more maneuverable you can march and shoot and you have leadership nine so i think for the same amount of point i would prefer a small block of blunderbuss can we team um yeah i think um i struggle a bit to do a lot of damage um i did uh, yeah a couple of wounds on the bastion here killed the bastion i guess did some wounds on the on the death star wounds on some units so a decent damage output, not expensive, can be a piece of chaff, so still quite interesting. The the fact that you can move and, cha and, and shoot is really good because you can go out of cover, shoot, you have hard targets. So I think for the, the amount of points that they cost, they are a really good choice. Uh, they can do damage on big unit as well. They can do a single damage with multiple wounds, so quite interesting. 
Uh, not my favorite uh, piece of shooting in the army, but really definitely a decent choice for the amount of points you pay. The slingshots, uh, I found often quite complicated to get good line of sight. Of course, they provide incendiary target, which is really good, but then you struggle with soft cover. You, you almost always have soft cover long range, you're like, okay, six up. Uh, it's it's not so easy. Uh, it's not so easy to use them, um, but but still, they provide something interesting. I think if you re rely a lot on getting incendiary token, why not? Vassal cavalry, always useful. Um, they are always able to do something. They help me to to secure the scenario against the Sylvan Elves. Uh, they provide some incendiary token. They can chaff. Uh, so they are some. They are really useful. It's always useful to have light cavalry with Vanguard. Also, if you play counter trust. So I think one unit of five is mandatory in the list. Uh, the Lugas, um, yeah, they, they did some job, but still, uh, for me, great weapon is definitely much better than bad weapon for them. I think they don't are enough of a threat with bad weapon. So I would definitely uh, go for great weapon. And you saw in my last tournament, I tested them with the great weapon options, two blocks. And I was quite happy with the, the damage output because uh, strength, two attack strength six AP4 is really great, can be flaming. So... I like the unit, they are good, they are very good Swiss knife, but I think I will drop the banner, drop the champion, put great weapon, and then you have something much more useful in the list. A bit more power as well, a bit more output. And the engine, close combat engine, uh, did some zoning, did overall, if you see, was good. I mean, made really good results. Uh, was able to secure an objective, to kill two blocks rangers, to zone for 400 points. I think it's definitely a very good result. Uh, I mean, I made some stupid choice on game two, but the rest, uh, I think it's a really decent uh, performance from him. But however, I'm still not convinced. I was still a bit lucky against War of the Dark God to be successful in the charge eight with two dice. And then here as well, that was still a bit dicey. I finished the game with one wound and here, I died towards the end, but it was still very useful. So I think it's a, a very useful model, really decent in combat. Um, for me personally, to my taste, I think the shooty version is, is more attractive because when you move, you are relatively slow. We movement 10 and then charge with two dice. I would prefer to do something when you just move and cover because basically this, this tank is kind of a wall. It's blocking a, a zone, it's threatening zoning. And therefore, if you have combat, it's somehow expected by your opponent, somehow. So therefore, I would probably prefer to have the shooty version than when you use it as a wall, you can also shoot, shoot, and do something useful. So when you're not in combat, you are also useful. But I need to admit, it, uh, it did huge performance for me during this tournament and was definitely did the job. So what are my general conclusions on my list? First of all, um, I think shooty list, they can scare people if in pairing process, they are always useful in, in teams uh, due to the potential range damage output. It's not always that you will do so much damage. Uh, as you can see, I didn't do so much damage with the four war machines and uh, the, the Bastion, but it's more than the, what, what it could possibly do is quite scary. So that's, that's uh, an effect of the list. Um, I felt that I have uh, a lack of combat power, of board control. Uh, if you don't have enough close combat and also maybe uh, the charge range is also a factor for that and the number of threats, close combat threats, is also a factor from that. Uh, basically, we lack the, the board control to control the map to, to go forward uh, because your opponent will be more often more close combat oriented than, than you and will gain more to going into combat because you have too much range damage. Then you are very often in a position where you need to defend and then you are basically uh, weak in uh, most scenario, which is a problem. So I think that's a, a bit for me the problem with shooty list is Either you do a very good uh, turn one to four and you kill a lot of stuff and then you can move on to the objective and try to score the objective. Or you don't kill enough and then you get stuck in combat and you do something like close to a, a small loss, but you still struggle on the objective. So I would say I struggle quite a bit to play most scenarios. Um, yeah, not, not enough scoring mobile unit to claim objective. I saw that. 
uh, it was kind of hard for me to play some objective, for example, a spoil of war or go for a breakthrough. Sometimes you need as well some mobility to, to really threat. And we saw that also with King of the Hill where I needed to reach the rune. Uh, all my score units were blocked, so it was relatively easy for my opponent to deny me the going into a train. So if I had, for example, a small unit of Toric or something much more mobile, I could have been able to, to reach the scenario much more easily. Uh, Bastion units was really resilient, very, very solid. I mean, you have a lot of bodies with 3 plus armor save, uh, providing some uh, very reliable shooting because you do a lot of shots. So basically you can really rely on the Bastion to kill Chaff, to really diminish some big units. So I was quite happy about uh, the way the Bastion can provide uh, damage. And I think that's something which is, again, uh, valid for, for the new version of the book. Um, and risky and expensive overlord, I had some fun playing it. I think it's a cool unit, but still uh, quite risky and it's capable of killing a lot of stuff, but you are not really able to, to fight in duel against uh, close combat oriented character who are the same, more or less the same amount of points. So you still, I think for doing more or less the same, maybe you can feel the a big monster and therefore take less risk of losing 600 points with only uh, four health point toughness five. So that would be my conclusion of the list. Um, it was not bad, not my favorite play style to play shooty, quite static uh, way of playing. I think I lacked a bit of, of, of combat, uh, close combat abilities, but still a pretty decent result on the, the five game I, I played. Uh, as I said before, I have some regrets on game two and game five, but still this was a positive learning experience. I was able to, uh, I guess, to, to learn a lot from these games against good opponents. And finally, uh, what are my my impression of the the outro? So first of all, uh, thanks a lot to Team USA for the organization of this awesome event. It was really intense, but awesome six weeks because basically you need to to imagine for those who didn't play the tournament, you need to imagine that you are all the way. You know, during the whole week there are people playing more or less at any time, so you can log on on UB and you see always outro game. So it's I don't know how many games I saw during the six week, but uh, a lot of them. You can just, uh, okay, have a look, you see what happened, you take a screenshot, you discuss a little bit with your mates what happened in this game. So on a macro level to get to know some new matchups and so on, I think it was really interesting to follow the Ocho and then playing it, it's uh, even more intense because then you follow your teammates who play a different schedule than you. So maybe you watch four to five games during the week. And then you have the pairing process, which you can discuss, prepare together, prepare for the game together. Uh, because it's UB, you can prepare pretty much everything. You can generate the model of your opponent, move them. Uh, you can really prepare everything you want to do. So this leaves you with an unlimited amount of preparation if you want to. I mean, it's it's crazy what, what you can see. And last but not least, I guess the, the fact that it was an ETC-like event, meaning a lot of international team, a lot of participation, uh, eight uh, man teams, six rounds, uh, it led to competitive gaming, relatively long games because of the yeah the fact that it was very competitive, and that's its UB as well. But uh, high quality game, very, very interesting and training to, to test yourself against uh, other opponents from other countries. Because let's be honest, during the year, you don't have that much the opportunity to face uh, players of other countries. You do local tournaments, sometimes you go abroad for a tournament, if you're lucky. And then uh, you have uh, ETC, WTC, some kind of big, big event where you can uh, train uh, yourself against the best of other countries. But there are not a lot of opportunities during the year. So I guess that was a, a golden opportunity to, to try to, to play against uh, some, some of, the, of the very good uh, ETC uh, players. Okay, uh, that was it. So yeah, really happy about our result. We were the, the first surprise to, to do so good towards the end. So really happy. Congrats to all my teammates. Uh, thanks a lot for all my opponent, uh, to all my opponents for the games. Was really uh, enjoyable to talk with them. Also, you, 
since it's UB, it's not tournament with no pressure of time, you can discuss a bit more about life, how it's going on, how is it with COVID situation and so on. So that was also an interesting part for me to, to discuss a bit, a bit more and uh, was also a good training for my English. <laughs> Okay, so that was it. Uh, thanks uh, again, everybody, for watching. I hope you like this series of video about the Ocho. What's coming next on my channel is another tournament report. I will play tomorrow, actually. Uh, last tournament in July, then I have some uh, a couple of deserved holidays because I provide you with a lot of content recently on my channel. I hope you really liked it. Play a lot in July, I guess like 10 games, more or less. Two tournaments plus the Ocho, so three tournaments actually. Uh, quite a lot of games. And then, yeah, some holidays in August. And then we'll see, I guess, some, some training, maybe a tournament or two. And then my big tournament of the, the second half of the year, 2020, will be the Inter Regio, which is the biggest French tournament. Uh, it's a special tournament, a couple hundred of people attending. So people from all over France, plus Switzerland, plus Belgium, a lot, lot of teams. Uh, and the, the particularity also of this event is that you get a quite high part, yeah, a good part of your points from the soft core, which leads to amazing armies, really amazing armies that you can see on the board. So I will try to do a couple of videos, pictures when I'm there. It will be at the end of October, so I will uh, keep you posted also on my preparation, because of course I don't know yet if I will play Ogre or ID, but I will definitely need to prepare a presentation board and to maybe uh, do some customization on my uh, current models. So I will keep you posted about the preparation for this big tournament. And uh, yeah, then uh, we'll see next year a little bit how is it going. Usually I organize with my club a big tournament in France as well in January. Uh, we'll see uh, how it evolves with the COVID situation. I hope we'll be able to, to do it again because we had some good success over the past two years with a lot of people attending. So I hope uh, we can do it. We also plan this year to open it a little bit more to the international. I already uh, talked a bit about that with the QTL team. Uh, other teams in Europe are really welcome to come. It's close to Geneva, so reachable also by flight. Um, it will be a two-day tournament with a lot of teams, uh, mostly from France, Switzerland. Uh, but uh, feel free to take contact with me if you think you will be interested. I can keep you posted. You can find um, all the details as soon as they will be uh, released on the uh, website T3, Tabletop uh, Tournaments, I guess it's a website. And also, of course, I will do some promotion video like I do every year. I, I keep you posted. Uh, once we know that we are going to organize it, I'm always doing a video with some impressions, some informations where you can register how it works. So we'll make sure that I do again uh, this video in English as well so that you can get all the information in case you want to participate. Then you can afterwards uh, take contact with us and we can organize that. So yeah, that was it. A uh, lot of blah blah. I hope you liked to, to see the result and a bit. I think it's always interesting to talk between what was the expected result of this matchup and how we made uh, to, at the end, how, how, it, how it went, what, what was the end result, uh, where had we some expected loss that turned in wins and so on. That's always interesting to see. And also what was our estimation of some matchup. So thanks a lot. Feel free to ask questions if you want to. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you soon on my channel. Bye, guys.